Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and this is an opinionated video. And when there is an opinionated video which is brought out to the light of the people, there is always some opposite conclusion that people try to drive from them. For example, if I just say, hey, don't go west, people will say that that means I have to go, if I cannot go west, I have to go east. But there are other directions, you can go in the north, you can go in the south and there are a plethora of other directions. So please, please don't draw conclusion just like having an opposite meaning of the video. This video is especially a kind of a commentary video where I want to bring your attention to something which is fundamentally going on wrong. Now there has been a lot of debate that went around and which keeps on popping around which is dev versus CP. So should I do development or should I do CP? It's almost like saying, hey, I work with my right hand, so should I chop off my left hand? It is same bizarre kind of argument that people draws out there. Now, I don't want you to have a pig fight in the comment section. I want you to have a meaningful conversation. I want you to just open up your brain because I'm going to show you something really, really wrong that is going on. I talked to a lot of people from the semesters of BTEC, uh, the bachelor's degree of engineering, and I talked a lot about them. In fact, some of the people were in their final years and I asked them, hey, what's your favorite programming language? A lot of them are focused on Python and JavaScript and whatnot. A huge bunch of them were just focused on, you know what, CPP or C++ is the best programming language. To which certain extent, I do agree. It's a fantastic programming language. It's not easy, definitely. Just because it was included in the semester one or semester two doesn't mean it's easy. There was no other options at that point of time and most of our curriculum didn't got an update. And that is the reason why CPP was included in the very initial semesters. But considering that, that this is an easy language would be a joke. And anybody who is an experienced, seasoned programmer in C++ will tell you, it ain't easy, man, it's not. It's not even close to we can call something as easy. What actually got my attention was a lot of people, when I asked them that, hey, uh, what are you building in C++? And they all were saying, we use C++ for competitive programming. I said, that's great that you are having fun with competitive programming. You are fun having uh, these problem solving skills, but what you are building in that? You have learned a language, but you are not using it. And they say, we cannot build much in C++. It's a, and when you ask them what you can do in C++, they all come up and say, hey, Word is designed in C++, Microsoft Word. Uh, Photoshop uses it a lot. Dropbox uses it a lot. Yes. And they use a lot of framework of C++. And when I asked them, hey, what's your framework? Uh, what's your favorite framework in C++? They all were just blank. Like, you, you are not understanding the situation. Let me tell you it with the reference of JavaScript. So let's just say you have been learning JavaScript from last six months. And when I tell you, uh, do you know NPM? And somebody says, I don't know NPM. I, I am learning JavaScript. And you'll say, you're learning JavaScript, but you have never heard about NPM? Or somebody who's learning JavaScript and I say, hey, have you ever heard about React or have you heard about Vue? You might not be able to code in it. Uh, you don't know framework in and out, but have you heard about it? And yes, they all are. And this is where my point is fundamentally that how well you are exploring the language. It's certainly C++ is a fantastic language, but when you compare it from the perspective of JavaScript, somebody learning JavaScript from last six months or one year and have no idea that NPM exists, or has no idea that React exists on the planet, I would doubt his learning path. I would doubt that what kind of communities he's following. I would doubt that what kind of YouTubers he is following if he's into that much of JavaScript. Similarly, if you are saying that you do C++ and you enjoy that while having competitive coding with your friends or with other communities, or you use C++ for solving lead code problems and you're not building anything in it, that's where something fundamentally is going on wrong. And we should stop blaming universities for that. Universities are self-studies, majorly self-studies. It is not something like in the US or in other countries, a lecturer comes up, walks you through with a step-by-step -step guide of the framework and then say, hey, now you know C++. It doesn't happen there as well. So we need to stop blaming. Instead, when we get entire six months to learn C++, we should explore it as maximum as possible. Now, I didn't want to make this video as just a rant video around how the competitive programming is spoiling the core essence of C++, but rather I want to give you a little bit more onto this video. Something that now you have a broader perspective of C++, you enjoy C++ and build something meaningful out of it, apart from doing competitive programming, which is also fine if you are doing that. So, with the conclusion part of this video, let me introduce you something really, really fantastic and interesting. And this whole thing actually came to my mind 
because uh, I was actually updating one of my old uh, Docker file, which is Crow. And I was surprised to know that a lot of people don't even know the frameworks and libraries which are available in C++. Forget that. Uh, I did a kind of a brief survey interview uh, for my master's. And I found out that people cannot even name five frameworks of C++. That actually melted my heart. How can you do this? How can you not know even one or two frameworks of C++? So for those who are new, Crow is a web framework for C++. You can build entire web applications. In one of the semesters which I taught in a university, which I will not name here, I taught Crow in that. It was a part of C++. So we actually configured the Crow. We attached a MongoDB to it and we wrote drivers for it. This was the whole and it was updated long time ago. So I was thinking, should I update this? And that's when this whole fiasco thing about C++ came to my mind. So instead of just making a ranting video about it, I would I think that it's better that you at least get introduced to some of the libraries which are core and powerful to C++ so that you at least build something out of it. OK, so first one, obviously, uh, this Crow, a great, great library for building the web application. Uh, comparatively, what I've seen with the others, this is much more easier to work with. Uh, it's almost like Flask, uh, but yeah, of course, C++. And it has easy routing, type safety handlers. Uh, it has a mustache as well. I'm pretty sure you know mustache. Uh, it's like a templating library. We use that a lot in Node.js as well. Middleware support and a lot more. The documentation is pretty easy, very understandable. There's a lot going on in here. So this is the first thing, uh, first library or framework that you should explore if you are using C++. If you are using a C++, this is fantastic one. This is Oat++. And this is, again, it's a modern web framework for C++ loaded with, uh, loaded and contains all the necessary components. So basically, whatever you need, a uh, very small memory footprint, you can design a really amazing web application through it. And of course, Amazon is there, Google is there, Azure is there. Host your own web application or web server uh, built totally in C++. There's a lot of documentation. A lot is going on. It's all C++. If you say that, yes, I am an enthusiast of C++, you should be studying more about it. Another one is this one, a fantastic CSV2. I'm pretty sure a lot of Python enthusiasts have already taken care of this CSV module. It was originally written in C++, and I see that all those APIs that are being written in Python and everything gets popular, but nobody comes up and say that, hey, I want to do it in core C++. I'm an enthusiast. I just want to do just the CP. Like, how bizarre this is that you don't want to do these things in CPP. Uh, you just want to learn it for just one purpose, one sole purpose, competitive programming. I'm not bashing competitive programming. It's good. It's fun if you're enjoying it. But otherwise, if you're not building anything in that language, I'll doubt you. Surely I'll judge you <laughs> in a fun way. Not like that. But yeah, I will. Uh, then I'm pretty sure you have heard about this one as well. Uh, but you actually heard about it just in Python, not here in its original raw format where this library actually shines. And you can install this as a package. Ah, this brings me to another great scenario. Uh, I was talking about NPM that exists in the JavaScript world. There is a CPM as well, uh, the C++ package manager, which exists in the world of C++, which helps uh, you to manage all the C++ libraries. Forget about that. A lot of people which I interviewed didn't know that C++ has versions. And now the language that you study, C99, that is not the language you should be studying now. It's far more advanced. There has been constant version update. I do have a long playlist in my uh, playlist here as well on the long form video. I did a kind of a 14 hour or something kind of a video. I explained that thoroughly in that. It's freely available on my YouTube that explains you the different version and things that has improved over the time in this language. So yeah, you should also work on that. So yeah, uh, this library. Uh, then we have another which is OpenCV. Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure you have heard a lot about that in the Python world. Why don't somebody comes up and explore more of this, write at least an article about it or uh, make a tutorial about it and something like that. You can see how active this is, like what more you want from this library to be active on. Uh, there is another interesting one, lib uh, VLC, very popular. There is another one, Poco. This is set of libraries. So this is not just one library. Anybody who is working on this, they should really look at the Poco C++ framework. Uh, pretty, pretty crazy, if you ask me. There has a lot of samples and these guys are like going on to the next level. Of course, if you are exploring that, there are two more libraries I would recommend. The next one is FFmpeg. If anyhow you play in the video segment or even the audio segment, you should know this library. If you don't know this, I will say that you don't know videos at all. We use this like anything in every single uh, companies that I have built or I have worked on. They use this because I have been uh, attached with a video kind of a thing for like 12 years or something now. 
And yes, we explore this in and out all the time. And still, there's so much more to learn about this library. Another one, the final one that I'll mention in this one is this Drogon, or you can say Dragon. Uh, it's again based on C++ 14 and 17, the most cutting edge and the updated one of the C++. HTTP application and various type of web apps, server programs, like what more you want? <laughs> what more you want uh, onto this one? So amazing library, very, very amazing. Uh, it's so much easy to work on with this Drogon. I'm looking forward to explore it compared to the Crow. Probably this year I'll explore this one a lot. Uh, but yeah, coming back on to the point that, yeah, things are there. Things are available there. So make sure you share this video in every single college group. Share this on your LinkedIn as well. And make sure you call the people out that C++ is not just a language for competitive programming, not just to be used on lead code. It's a language which is far more versatile, the language which is getting constantly updated, and it pains the true developer when you say that you are not building anything in C++, you are just learning it for either curriculum or just CP because somebody said it out loud. Yes, I know, this is more like a rant video, but it's more like putting a point in a meaningful way, not getting biased onto one or other, and also to introduce you to some library so that you take something meaningful out of it. If you have enjoyed this video, consider hitting that subscribe button. If not, that is still fine. I'm here going nowhere at all. And I'll surely catch you up in the next video.